Oh, there's a guy here, Matty. Okay. He's north. Yeah. North, east, playing with a bow. You guys, actually. Are they shooting each other? He's or? running, he's running. Alright. Uh, Sarah, we're at four fuel, by the way. Uh, so Runa, uh, could, you, could you send yeah, me the same. code of the gates on, on the steel? Uh, which gate is Whoa. it? Whoa. The front gate. What, my farm? Hmm. I hit him. No. Oh, he's please. at the very front. There's I, I don't know the code. Three over here as well. oh, someone over there. Who is that? Us, it's us, I believe. There's no arrow. Let me just. It's far. It's no, Scorpion, yeah, yeah, I yeah, believe. Scorpion. Yeah, he's stopped there. I think I killed him. I hit. Yeah, yeah I killed his him. enemy. Yeah, from Pleasant Valley Clan. Nice. Alright, come on, let's go. Hi guys, this is Matthias, and I'm coming at you here with a Just Survive a video, and as a lot of you have noticed, I haven't been playing this for quite a while, and that's basically what this video is going to be about. As a matter of fact, this is not only me. A lot of the active players from the Just Survive community has quit playing the game, and this seems to have been going on for quite a while. Now, there is of course a lot of different reasons why people would quit playing a game. I mean, it's only natural that uh, after a couple of months, a lot of players uh, get realize that this is not the game for them, or they get bored quite quickly, or there's a new game that comes out and you want to check that out instead. But with Just Survive, I think it's a lot more than that. So now I'm going to bring up four different reasons that I believe are the, the four biggest reasons why people would be frustrated over Just Survive and quit playing. And I'll give you my point of view, my thoughts about it as well. Now the number one is, of course, cheaters. So many times I've heard of big clans with like 10 plus players that all quit at once just for the reason of cheaters. Number two on the list, I think, would be performance. The performance in this game has been beyond terrible, and I'm going to elaborate on performance quite a bit in this video. Now, the other two reasons are things that I am a little bit more uncertain of, and that's because I don't have that strong opinions about it myself. So needless to say, I don't really know which one of these two is more important than the other. The zombies, which uh, a lot of players seem to want to have a bigger impact of the game, and a lot of people want them to be more dangerous, people want them in bigger numbers, people want uh, more uh, versions of them, and I guess it's kind of natural being that this game is called a zombie survival game, and it's been marketed that way. Now another rather big topic is uh, kill on sight, cause something that is exclusively a player behavior, and uh, that, uh, according to some players, has a massive effect on the game, and I'll try to elaborate on this as well. So yeah, let's start off with cheaters. And for myself, the amount that cheaters has affected the way I play the game, or my experience with H1Z1, is probably hundreds of times more than all other games I've played combined. Never in my wildest imaginations could I ever believe that Cheaters would have such a massive impact on a game as it has had in H1Z1. I think it was from a base, yeah. I didn't see the sniper, I just heard the shot and the bullet hit me. Alright. Oh! Nah, that's, oh, that's a cheater. There's no way. Yeah, that's a cheater. Like I really? was, yeah, I was, I was killed with a shotgun point blank, but there's nobody around me. <laughs> there, wow. there's, there's nobody there. Because I was walking out of French. And they're, they're not even looting me. They're not even there. Yeah, they didn't loot me either. Now, the way I see it, I believe that the Daybreak Game Company, former SOE, were rather surprised over the amount of cheaters and the effect they had on the game, because there was no way near as many cheaters in the game Planet Side 2, which is the game that I played for two years before H1Z1, and Planet Side 2 is a futuristic MMO shooter that is made on the same engine, uh, on a uh, similar sized map, and um, yeah, made by the same developers, I guess that goes without saying. And uh, you know, that game, I could play for weeks, sometimes months, without even seeing or encountering a single cheater. Now, players that are experienced with ESP are probably quite hard to detect, but I think it's pretty safe to say that the Daybreak Game Company, former SOE, they were not in any way prepared for the massive infestation of cheaters that uh, has basically ruined the H1Z1 experience for a lot of players. But now, if there is anything that Daybreak Game Company should not be surprised over or should not be unprepared for, is the importance of performance. And here, there is no excuse. I started playing the open beta of Planet 2 in, I think, September of 2012. 
And the poor performance was one of the first things that I noticed and one of the first things that I wanted to point out to the devs. And it was not only me. A lot of people in the community said the same thing. And this was also brought up by some of the bigger names out there, like uh, Frankie on PC and Total Biscuit. Now, more than three years later, I run around in Pleasant Valley, and over and over I see my frames per second dropping below 30. And now, seriously, if there's anybody from the developer team that is watching this, you, you just can't keep doing this. You can't keep ignoring something as important as performance. Now, back in 2012, 2013, you still had all these ignorant people that would, you know, from time to time write a wall of text on Reddit telling you how the human eye cannot see more than 30 frames per second and blah, blah, blah. Now, that's ancient history now. That shit doesn't work anymore. And you, as a game developer, can no longer ignore something as important as this. So now the most obvious thing that people will point out when it comes to performance will be optimization. But the fact is that both in Planetside 2 and in H1Z1, optimization by itself played a relatively small role compared to what it does in other games. And that is because us, the players, in an MMO game, we have a massive impact on the performance as well. And I would say in H1Z1 even more than in Planetside 2. Oh, grenade. And a sniper rifle. No, what? Yeah, it despawned! Now in Plaza 2 you would see a massive decrease in your performance when there was a lot of players in the same area, while in H1C1 the major issue has normally been a basis. And recently we've seen the solution for this, which is base building restriction, but in all honesty, I think this was just implemented too late. Now, the last few times that I played Just Survive was on the two American servers that this was first implemented, and the difference was huge. Now I'm sure that there's a lot of players that's going to enjoy this, but for my own sake I just have to say that it's happened too late. I don't care anymore. Nice. The thing about a survival game, what I realized when I first started playing it was that the thing that got me really hooked, the thing that got me really interested and the thing that kept me playing was that I cared. I cared about my character, I cared about my base, I cared about my loot, and lately, for several months, I just don't. I don't care if I have 50 bullets in my base or if I have 25,000. I don't care if my base has been raided or if I have enough uh, ammo and guns to supply 20 people. Because how am I going to enjoy a game when I'm playing it with 20 frames per second? Or if I know that I'll probably just lose everything I have on me to another cheater again. And then we have the problem with the cost. Kill on sight. Players that have guns, players that are experienced, players that are organized that kill players that are basically defenseless and uh, that either just started playing the game or just start on the server or for whatever reason has no gear. Hit a guy. Bop. There's a guy? Yeah. Did you kill him? Yeah. He's coming up. Oh, Second fuck shot. Nothing. nothing. Is this yeah. Maddie Ace? Yeah, it's me. Sorry, man. Sorry, man. I thought you had a shotgun. I really needed a shotgun. Sorry. Oh my god, it's Maddie Ace! I'm done. <laughs> I told you, dude. <laughs> what are you doing on the server? I love you, bro. Keep making the yeah. awesome videos. Thank you, Honestly. man. I'm, I'm really sorry for that. That was unnecessary of me, but That's yeah, fine. have fun. I don't really care, bro. Have fun. You too. Keep me playing too. on the server. I'll, I'll get you eventually. <laughs> I'm sure you will. Hey, hey man. man. Don't make Don't assumptions, assumptions, my dude. My dude. So now, before I elaborate on Kill on Sight, let me just point something out here. Being that I am a YouTuber, being that I have mostly covered Just Survive, and especially the PvP aspect of Just Survive or Survival, this uh, quite uh, significantly changes how people react to meeting me in-game, killing me in-game, or being killed by me in-game. Now because of this, I can understand if some people would uh, say that I have lost my objectivity here, and that what you see in my videos does not in any way reflect your normal daily experience playing Just Survive. You're probably right. I have probably lost a lot of perspective just for the fact that I am a YouTuber. Oh, what the fuck? He hit me. So anyway, let me try to elaborate on this for a little while here. First and foremost, I know that there are people that just kill fresh spawns only for the simple reason that they are dicks. Now, the most common reason why anybody would kill anyone in a survival game is of course because of loot. And the thing is that ammo doesn't bulk all that much, so even if a person is running around without a satchel, that player can still carry enough ammo to make it worth it for somebody to kill him with, let's say, a shotgun or a hunting rifle. Now on top of that is also a quite common strategy to let a player in your group run around as a fresh spawn in order to scout information about an enemy group, uh, where they have their bases, how many they are, and where they are. 
And many times when I see people's reactions, both in-game and on Reddit, it actually surprises me how people can be so angry over that. There's a ton of explosions going off near me. Do you hear those or no? No. Matty? Matty Ace? Yeah, it's me, man. No, dude. <laughs> <laughs> it's you, dude. How dude, the fuck did you hit me with that? Videos. How did you hit me that first uh, arrow, man? That was amazing. Yeah, I know, that was random. Uh, I was really nervous when that first hit. I was like, oh no, is that a <laughs> cheater or what the fuck? <laughs> no, that was so random. All right. See you, see you around, man. Yes, yeah, see you, mate. Good Bay, uh, by the way, are you, are you by yourself? Yeah, yeah, I just uh, locked into the server. Just came in. Wait, let me see. Av wait, wait, wait. Maybe I can invite you. Av Average P Nix. Okay. <laughs> yep. I remember. Yeah, I'll invite you. Alright, cool, man. I'll respawn then. The fact of the matter is that after you get killed or after you kill somebody, the way you behave can have a massive impact in uh, how the rest of your experience is going to be playing on that server and in that area. Some of the most interesting PvP that I've had has been in uh, Boba's truck stop. Uh, during this time I was in a community and we were fighting another community. And the thing about it is that we, both our communities were more interested in the PvP aspect than raiding for example. And we had enough to raid their bases five times over. They probably had just as much, but we never did that. We wanted to fight each other's. We rarely, if ever, killed each other's when we were fresh spawns. Instead, we wanted to fight each other's when we were geared. And we had a lot of fun. And many times after killing each other's, we didn't even take each other's loot. Instead, we stayed there and guarded it so that the player that we killed could just come back and pick it up again. Now, eventually, we ended up playing together. And unfortunately, the problem with that was that we became too big. I do not want to be in a community that is so big that we just completely take over a whole server. That would be like the most boring thing that I could ever possibly do. Now, it is, of course, quite natural that we get angry if we get killed in a way that is uh, very unfair. And especially if there is seemingly no reason for somebody to kill you. Being angry, showing that, screaming at your opponent, insulting your opponent, is probably the worst thing you can do. Especially if you're playing solo. Because the guy that killed you, he might just have had a bad day. He might just have thought that you were a threat. He might thought that you had some loot that he wanted. Or he might just thought that you were part of an enemy team. And even if another player does kill you in a way that is uh, really bad-mannered, this player might actually be a possible friend of yours in the future. And then the last thing that I would like to mention when it comes to problems with Just Survive is the zombies. And in many ways I think they completely define one of the bigger problems with uh, Just Survive the way I see it. And this became quite clear with a recent update that made a lot of changes to the zombies. Because the zombies has gone through quite a number of changes and quite a lot of things have added has been added to them over the time that this game has been out. And I'm not gonna lie, even as a player who barely cares about the zombies whatsoever, a lot of the changes that I've seen has made me go, wow, that's actually really cool. But here's the thing. If a game is a zombie survival game, if the zombies are supposed to be important, if the community, a big portion of the community, think that they should be important, then they better work properly. And they don't. Oh, what the fuck? For as long as I've played the game, zombies will hit in the complete opposite direction of where you're standing and still deal damage to you. Now obviously when they do 10 damage this doesn't matter, but once you start making them more powerful and more dangerous, this is going to have a bigger impact on the game. And the problems with them is going to be more obvious and people are going to pay more attention to that. And they walk through the trees. Now another point of view is uh, content, you know, adding content or lack of content and whatnot. And it's easy to believe that if you have, if you just add something to the game, then you will automatically get more content that way. But the problem that we've seen repeatedly in H1Z1 is when a new feature is implemented, then that new feature many times cancels a former important feature. And instead of adding to the game, it takes away from the game. And over and over again, we've seen that uh, especially Pleasant Valley has become the epicenter of problems.
The thing is that when games have a major problem, then it's important that that is recognized and that that is fixed. While what I've seen in H1Z1 is that many times instead of fixing the problems, they're painting over them instead. So we have the same problem, but with different skins and different animations. Now some people find some things interesting, while others don't. It's an interesting feature not being able to move. Now it seems to me that there are certain areas on the map where content is more needed than others, and uh, why making it into a clusterfuck in the three towns? I never really understood that idea, but of course that's just a matter of opinions. So now whether or not you agreed with what I had to say in this video, I still want to thank you all for watching.